Guys, I got something near and dear to my heart I want to talk about today. It's keeping our ladies safe. It's keeping the women in our lives, mom, daughter, grandma, wife, girlfriend, safe. I don't care about the argument of it's sexist, they're the same as us, they're not. Physiologically speaking, most average men are much stronger and more capable physically when it comes to fighting, make sure you keep, uh, keep in touch here, than, in, than the strongest women. Now look, I'm not talking about like CrossFit champions and, and professional female athletes. I'm saying a cross section of society. Your wife up against you carrying firewood all afternoon. Or how about wrestling? Wrestling, a really good female wrestler against an average high school, just kid, male, 180 pound, strapping, testosterone filled boy. We're not the same. Where do we start with this stuff? And I'm gonna go into a few things. I'm gonna talk about weapon selection. I'm gonna talk about how to teach the ladies in your life. I'm gonna talk about whether or not you're suited to teaching them. And I'm gonna talk about instilling confidence. Let's think about one thing here to start out. We have a little baby boy and a little baby girl. What do we do? That little boy gets a blue bedroom, he gets a fire engine, he gets GI Joes, he gets uh, maybe guns, he gets all kinds of sporty, manly, tough guy stuff. That little girl, she's sweet. She gets bows, she gets a pink room, she gets dolls, she gets easy bake oven if those are still a thing. She gets all the things that we think girls are supposed to be. You know, historically, women, pretty tough, pretty tough. Some people in, in the course of human history when it came down to it, it was well known that women were the tougher side of the species, all things considered. So why is it important? Why do I bring up this from birth thing? Because we are our thoughts. We are uh, the sum total of all of the experiences in our life up to this point right now today. What your parents taught you, what your teachers taught you, how you took that information and processed it. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? And I think it is so important that we begin to, believe, to build a belief system in young women, young girls, that lets them know, I'm capable. I am capable. I don't care if your wife or girlfriend grows up to be this tall or this tall. They need to know from the time they're little, I am capable. I'm able. Your attitude must be rooted in self-belief. When you wake up, or when your little one wakes up, if we're talking about one that still we have time to help them develop this, Tell them, or if you yourself as a female are, are getting older, tell yourself, I'm capable and able to protect me and mine. If it's that little one, you tell her, whatever her name is, Sharon, Lucy, those are my ladies' names, or all my sisters or my mother. I'm able, I'm capable, you're able, you're capable. They need to believe that. Why? Why is that so important? Well, what's capable even mean? Webster says it means sufficiently able, having power or capacity qualified. This is a quote from one of my favorite thinkers, William James. William said, it is our attitude at the beginning of a difficult task, which more than anything will affect its successful outcome. I think the ladies that I know in my life that are taken from us, that were killed, that were killed by some piece of garbage that thought what he needed or what he wanted was more important than their life. I guarantee in that moment that they were fighting for their life, it was difficult. Wouldn't it be better if in that moment we knew I'm capable, I can handle this, I will fight tooth and nail for my life, for the life of those that's important to me to not be taken from this earth prematurely? It's our attitude at the beginning of a difficult task, which more than anything else will affect its successful outcome. Mr. William James was a pretty sharp cat. Mr. Mark Twain, Sam Clemens was his real name, right? Sam said, a man cannot be comfortable without his own approval. Or a woman cannot be comfortable without her own approval. What was he talking about? Hey man, if, if I don't feel that my actions are, are okay, if I think I'm going to get ridicule, if I'm not comfortable in my own skin, that's a problem. 
You know, there's a lot of women that are, that are hurt, that are, that are accosted, that are beaten, that are raped because they didn't want to be rude when some dude got too close to them. It's bred into us to be nice. It's bred into us to just not push back, to not, I know I'm told I'm supposed to be cute. I'm supposed to be nice. It's bred into us to do that. When we start teaching girls, you know what? If something feels off, if something feels like it's not supposed to be that way, it's probably not. Based on how we train ourselves, what we think about, it's very easy to, to, to get very paranoid. I meet people all the time in this training community because they don't think about the right things in the right way. They think everything is a threat. I had a woman in class last week that said, what if I'm out in, with my kids in, at the zoo, at a, a, a movie, at, at a place where there's lots of people? I can't pay attention to everybody. You know, we can't, none of us can. So what we need to do is figure out what doesn't belong. I need to figure out what here doesn't belong. And that's another topic altogether, but I wanna, I wanna start to develop this notion, this idea that we are capable. Be it me, fairly physically fit man, or your little five foot, 100 pound wife or daughter. Once you begin to believe, you can begin to learn in a manner that's appropriate for you. Why is this important? Because as we started, husband's gun may not have any problem. It might be the best gun. A Glock like this is a capable, well-designed pistol, but it might not fit my wife's little hands. So we have to get a gun that fits. Every class I go to, a woman shows up with a gun that her husband says, I got you, for, I got you babe, I got all this gear. And he goes out and he buys gear that fits him, that he likes. What sense does that make? I'm not gonna wear my wife's shoes and she won't wear mine. I'm not going to drive the same vehicle that she drives because her needs to get to and from work are different than my needs to get to and from work. For example, this, these PPQs from Walther, it's not a plug for Walther, but I, the reason that you guys see me using these is they work really great. So check it out, a Glock 19. This is an awesome Glock 19 from Boresight Solutions, and I got a story about this, versus this PPQ. They're about the exact same size. Uh, but for the most part, every woman I put this in their hand, and this is my wife and daughter's choice, they do better with this. Ergonomically, the controls are bigger, so things like locking the slide back or dropping a magazine, they find it easier. And that's not my opinion. I put it into at least 100 ladies' hands and seen a good result. So find gear that works for them, not that works for you. I had a student in class last week. We did an all-ladies class. She showed up and she had her husband's Glock 19. He had the extra large back strap on it. So if you're not familiar with Glock 19's Gen 4's, they have interchangeable back straps. Well, he's a big, like six foot three dude. She's about this tall, he's about this tall. His hands are bigger than mine and I've got pretty big hands. That was ready for him. Well, she could barely hold it. I said, hey, do you mind? She had a Glock 19 holster and mags. Can I give you a Glock? So this Boresight Solutions Glock, that grip's been slicked up. It's a little bit narrower, and it's definitely narrower than the one she had with the bigger grip. You might say, why not just change grips? Two reasons. One, I didn't have it. Two, this gun's been stippled really high and really nice, not rough, but it's really easy to shoot. And it's got a few other modifications. I've got a oversized slide lock lever, and I've got a bit of, of serrations on the front of the slide to help with manipulation, some, some here, and good sights. She shot it all weekend, she loved it, and they're gonna have Ben build them one. Awesome. Find gear that fits the lady. A gun that fits your hand, this is what it says here, might not work for you. Uh, might not work for, for everybody, right? The one that works for husband might not work for wife. Technique or a practice that suits a 250 pound linebacker, it may not well work for a 120 pound mom with a couple kids behind her, right? Completely different. Me out with all my buddies is completely different than my wife or daughter out with her girlfriends. You gotta, you gotta accept the physiological limitations that we as humans have. If what you're being taught doesn't work for you, how will you ever be able to feel capable?
If what you're doing, if you don't have confidence in the, the ability to deploy the tactic, the idea, the, uh, the method, how are you going to do it when it's for real? That's the next thought. That's the thing that I think is missing. We keep passing on information that it's not contextually sound. It doesn't, it doesn't work for everybody. Check this out. It doesn't matter if thousands of people believe in you unless you believe in you. That was Maddie Melhorta. It doesn't matter if thousands of people believe in you unless you believe in you. Side note, you know, we see like famous musicians, actors, artists that people love their work. Uh, they want to be with them. They want to meet them. They want to take pictures with them. They want their autographs. And then what do we, we find out that they killed themselves. They OD'd on alcohol or drugs or they have alcohol or drug issues, or they, they are chronically unhappy. There's a self-belief, a self-worth issue, and I'm not trying to oversimplify a, a very complex problem, but I think that illustrates what I'm talking about. If you don't believe in you, it doesn't matter what thousands of people have to say. This is how we start with these little girls, man. I have... I have several stories that we've told in other podcasts. I've told in other videos. We had a, a young girl that we knew growing up, growing up. She was my sister's greatest friend in the world. She was at our house for, for parties, holidays, after school for supper. Uh, I knew her very, very well. And at, at when I was 15 years old and she was 16 years old, she was babysitting. She was babysitting for a family friend, uh, for her sister rather, her nephew. He was less than two years old. As she was home that night babysitting a neighbor man, his name was Dale Kauke. Dale decided that he had to have her. So he, from what we gathered by sitting through court proceedings, knocked on the door, made his way in, and proceeded to have his way with her and stabbed her over and over and over again. And to hide his evil deed, he lit the house on fire with that girl and with her nephew in the home. Thankfully, a neighbor saw the smoke and was able to get in and get the baby out. But the young lady in the story was not so lucky. She went on to the other side from smoke asphyxiation, uh, smoke inhalation and asphyxiation while barricading herself in the bathroom of that home. Those stories need not happen. And that story is one of the things I think about when I'm talking to ladies. You must believe you are capable. You know, in a, a, a lion's pride, it's a family of lions, the males, they'll kill the old male that oversees that, that pride. They will literally fight him or run him off, and he'll go off into the, to the plains and die because he can't hunt anymore. The females in those prides are the hunters. They're about 30% faster than the male. They're lighter. They're sleeker. But those young cubs, those female cubs, they are taught, it's ingrained, pardon me, in their brain, in their psyche from the time they are young females. It's my job to be fast, to hunt, and if necessary, be vicious. I'm not a, a, a professional when it comes to animal behavior and such, but I think if you read what I'm talking about, you'll find it true. We need to teach our young ladies that they can be vicious, can be fast, can be ruthless if the time comes. We need to teach them it is not okay to be meek and mild when somebody is inside of their personal space and it makes them feel uncomfortable. See, we don't wait until somebody's got their hands around our throat to stop them. We don't wait until somebody's got their hands around our throat to ask them to step back. We don't wait until somebody's pushed us into the back seat of their car or into a doorway to ask them to get back. And that's the problem. We can do that politely. And so what I'm talking about here is beginning to revamp how we think about our personal safety, how your young one, how your daughter, how your wife, how your grandma, how your mother, how your sister, how your aunt, how your niece, how she thinks about her personal safety. I'll tell you what, my wife, my daughter, my mother, my sister, my aunt, every one of those ladies is worth the world to me. If something happened to them, just as something, if, if something happened to one of the ladies in your life and you could do something about it, you could have done something about it, you would never 
for the rest of your days, forgive yourself. So what can you do? You can have them trained. You can help instill that mindset in them. And you can do it without taking away their femininity. You can do it without making them tough and gruff. You can do it without them having to grind their fingernails down and shave their head and, and, and uh, you know, become some kind of lady that they're not. What it comes down to is accepting that it is okay to be violent and to be ruthless. You know, I have a friend that makes knives. I'm, I'm plugging some friends through this video. This is a gorgeous knife I had my buddy Mike from auxiliary manufacturing make. I said, I want a blade with a worn cliff, worn cliff edge that I can drive through a car door if I had to. Of course, I'm not gonna stab a car door. But what I'm gonna do is be able to stick it through anything I might need to. That said, do you think my wife would carry this? Do you think your daughter would carry this? I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with no. So, you know, maybe we need to find something that they would carry, something that, that works for them. Something like, like this. Something that they can mount up in their purse, and they can work. Talking about getting a tool that they, they themselves can use, that they're capable with. No, it's not a plug for this blade. But the reason I use it is because it's capable. My daughter has drove her blade like this through a metal trash can, into a punching bag, through layers of clothing. But, but Mick, my wife's not going to do that. You know what? She's not because maybe she hasn't thought about it. She's not because maybe we haven't put it into context. Some food for thought, man. If your wife doesn't find this stuff exciting, let her know that she, the chances are you won't be there to protect her. You won't be outside your daughter's dorm room. You won't be there in that parking lot outside the, the mall at night. You will not be there in her office when, when somebody comes in and, and decides that he's going to shoot the joint up because his head's sick. You won't be there. You won't be there. And it is important to you, this is the sales pitch, it is important to you that she comes home at night. It is important to you that, that, to, to you that your daughter, your niece, your, your, your loved one, this female, that she does not have it in her mind what being raped feels like. She doesn't have it in her mind what being stabbed or shot or kidnapped feels like. She doesn't have it in her mind what being so helpless feels like that she has to live with it, and you have to live with it because you are incapable or unwilling to deal with a topic that's not fun, that's not sexy, that's, that's uh, not joyful. You know what is joyful? The day that something may ever happen and she calls you or she comes home or the police call you and they say, sir, this is officer so-and-so. Don't be alarmed, everything's okay, I've got your wife here. Everything's all right. Come on down. We got to tell you about what happened. Or, sir, this is the hospital. We've got your wife in here getting checked out. Don't be alarmed. She's okay. But we got to tell you what happened. She was, she was accosted today, but she's okay. She, she came out on top. Wouldn't that be better to hear that than the opposite? Sir, we've got a terrible news. Are you sitting down? Your, your daughter, she's gone. Because that shit happens every day somewhere. You know what? It's not just crazy, guys. It's that boyfriend that she didn't get away from. It's that ex-husband. That, that piece of paper that you get from the court that says you have to stay away from me, it doesn't mean shit to somebody that is sick in the head and wants to hurt you. Until we can wrap our head around the idea that our life is so important that we must learn to bear our fangs, to bear our claws, regardless of our sexuality, regardless of how we were raised, regardless of our religious persuasions or preferences. There is no God I will worship that says I cannot protect myself. There is no deity I will pray to that tells me I cannot raise my daughter my, and loved ones 
to defend their life because what is the purpose of worshiping some deity if not to continue living a long, full life? Look, we'll continue on here. I don't want to bemoan the fact, but we have to wrap our heads around that idea and you have to impress it upon your loved ones. I love you so much that I have to share this stuff with you. And it might not be from me. I might send you to see Mickey or Bob or Tom or John or Sarah or Judy because they're going to pass some information on to you. But I love you enough that I have to do this. I have to do it. You know, what if you work in a place where having a, a gun is not allowed? You may say, I'll just break the law. Well, what if you work in a courthouse? What if you work in an airport? What if you work in a place like that? How about this? I, the last ladies class I did, I brought some good saber pepper spray and I had those gals with test bottles. They're basically spraying inner water and they got to spray it. How many of you buy these things but you never have tried it? You don't know how it works. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? You have to know how it works. You have to try it. I think we need a multifaceted approach. This is what I think is important. We need a multifaceted approach. We need to teach our ladies to appreciate their self their self worth. They need to appreciate that they are valuable enough that they need to train themselves to get their mind wrapped around the idea that I'm going home to my kids, to my parents, to my husband. They need to wrap their head around that they are completely capable of of dishing out righteous, anger-filled violence. What do I mean by that? Righteous in the fact that it is right. We don't just, we don't use these tools and these tactics for unrighteous reasons. That's what criminals do. But that for the right reasons, somebody trying to harm you and take your life, you get angry about that. I am angry because you forced me to do this. So it is okay to teach them that righteous and anger-filled violence, violence, if necessary, is okay. Mick, why are, you, why are you getting so heated about this? If I come sit with you in the hospital after your female loved one is raped, beaten, or killed, I guarantee you will be angry too. Friends, take this shit seriously. Take the lives of the ladies in your family more seriously than your own because quite frankly, you are gonna have an easier time defending some type of attack. Let's make these ladies the most capable that they can be. I want them to be able to bear their fangs and claws in a moment's notice if need be and get it done. That's all I gotta say. You can reach out to us at carrytrainer.com. We do teach women only classes which we found in that kind of environment really helps them get comfortable, open up. Did a class last weekend. Half these ladies, when started, not only did they not know how to load or cycle or, or shoot the weapon, many of them were scared to even do that. By the time we were done, they were shooting and moving. They were running through a slalom, uh, controlling muzzle and, and trigger finger. They were engaging small targets, large targets. They were reloading quickly. They were shooting from concealment. They were using their, their voices as they were engaging targets, telling, telling uh, bad guys to back up, stay away. They were using cover to hide. They were using movement and violence of action to surprise a would-be adversary. They were thinking and using decision-making skills. And you know what was super cool? Is they learned it all faster than any men because ladies are better students than dudes. That's just a fact, and I'm willing to admit it. I wish that I had a brain like most ladies do because I'd be a lot farther in life. They pay attention to details. They, they listen. They uh, take things very seriously, and they follow directions well. That sounds like no man. <laughs> Pretty much the case. Your ladies are capable, and if you're a woman, you're capable. You have the uh, utmost capacity to dish out righteous violence if needed. All you need to do is learn that self-belief, learn that you can, and then start inputting the data. Find a tool that works for you, find somebody to help you learn how to use those tools, and then have those tools with you. Be it a firearm, be it a blade, 
be it a left lethal, lethal option like pepper spray, like this good Sabre pepper spray. And learn, ladies, that if something feels off, if it truly feels off and you're basing your opinion on your intuition of living a good life, then it probably is off. We've all met somebody that always thinks everything's off and maybe they're the off one. So please do keep that in mind. If something feels off, if somebody's getting too close to you, if the aura that they're putting off makes you feel fearful or afraid, hey man, back off. I've got nothing for you. It is not unladylike to use your words. Why do I say that? And I've asked, I've asked and told many women this. Any gentleman will not put you in a position where you feel that way. No gentleman will put a woman in a position where she feels fearful. We sense that too. No gentleman will put a woman in a position where she feels like her space is being crowded. Think about that. If it feels off, it probably is. Guys, train your women. Women, know that you are capable. You are completely able of dishing out righteous, anger-filled violence. Don't allow somebody in your space. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Look, I've never birthed a kid. And if you ask any man, they say, heck no, I want nothing to do with that. Every woman I know, every woman I know is completely capable of it. God made you to be able to do something men cannot do. And that makes you in many ways much tougher, much more resilient, much more capable than us dudes. This is Mickey with CarryTrainer.com. I pass on this message because I think it is the most important thing that we can do as protectors. It's teaching those that we protect to protect themselves because we will not always be there. Tell somebody you love them. Remember why we do this stuff. It is so that we can live a long, full life. Be well. This August, we'll be offering a special couples-only training event hosted in the beautiful rolling hills of Ohio. Women shooting on the range together as a team. We'll provide a safe, warm environment where couples can practice with their firearms and learn important life-saving skills. With their partners, I feel like it would just be a good atmosphere for women to get more comfortable. This is more than just a training event. We're really looking forward to this event. Not only are we going to spend some quality time with our husbands, but we're going to have some lady time too. The weekend experience includes lodging at the luxurious Hotel Covington. Overlooking the Ohio River, you'll enjoy delicious meals and spa treatments. You'll be shooting at Impact Shooting Center, a purpose-built, members-only outdoor range with all the proper amenities. This special event is designed for couples who are interested in learning together, all while strengthening their bonds and relationship. I know for me that I want to protect myself and my family, and I don't want to have to rely on my husband always being there. Absolutely, it's a real confidence builder, and you just kind of you feel like a badass when you can handle a weapon, and you know that deep down, if something were to happen, there's no doubt I'm gonna miss, or something bad's gonna happen to me because I can take care of myself. Very good. Elapsed time, two, zero, one. Hey guys, wanted to talk to you for a minute about our couples only event. So we've set this up in beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio, right on the Kentucky border. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna be at Hotel Covington. We told you about some of that stuff in this video and we're gonna be at Impact Shooting Center. Fantastic location, we've held classes there before. We wanted to put together a place where you can come and learn actual skills that can save you in all kinds of situations in life. We also wanna create an environment where you are gonna to learn together so when you go back to your home, your home range, your gym, you guys have a system, you and your partner, your spouse, on how to train together. So this is gonna be uh, shooting. We're gonna be talking about some medical stuff. We're gonna be talking about how to make your home a place that burglars don't want to come to. We're going to be talking about how you can keep your kids safe in this world. We're going to even talk
talk a little bit of cybersecurity stuff because all of this uh, affects us as families. And don't forget, all the meals are included. And this isn't Mickey D's. This is top notch food from a very fine chef. We also have all the lodging included. Dynamite Hotel. Uh, this isn't some roadside dive. This is a very posh, high-end hotel that we're also going to have some spa treatments for. Heck yeah. So if you want a discount on it, early bird rate ends April 30th. This event will fill up. We've already had a ton of uh, people sign up for the event. Don't wait.